An important question for many of us Tesla investors right now is what will happen over the next several months to both the stock and to the economy. In today's show, we're going to show you a video clip from Dan Ives, Managing Director of Wedbush Securities, who is bullish on Tesla and is targeting the stock to grow 50% to over $300 very soon. And we'll also show a video of Ray Wang of Constellation Research, who is bullish on the economy, saying that he sees Microsoft overtaking Apple as the largest company in the world next month as it rides the AI wave. <clears throat> so today we have Jeff Lutz with us. Jeff is an ex-supply chain executive worked at Motorola, Google, and Lenovo, currently running his own uh, consulting firm. Thank you so much for Jeff. Great to be with you, Herbert. Looking forward to talking about this. Yeah, so let's start with Dan Ives. Dan is, as we know, a pretty bullish on Tesla. He's replying to people who actually sees Tesla very differently at the, the quarter. He's very bullish. Let's hear his uh, take. Four of our traders tonight are uh, negative on Tesla, so we had to bring in a pinch hitter here to play mm. the bull. <laughs> our next guest has a $310 price target on Tesla. That is nearly 50% upside from here. Let's bring in Wedbush's Dan Ives. Welcome back, Dan. Hey, great to be here. Good to be here. Uh, yeah, it's great to have you. Uh, should it be kicked out of the Magnificent Seven? Does it go to 50? I mean, like, where, where do you start? I mean, I think, this I think six to nine months from now, the stock has a three in front of it. In term, I think it's back to above 300 as ultimately, I believe this is more of an air pocket that we're seeing from a growth perspective. I think margins start to trough out and going into next year, I think numbers conservative and the sum of the parts, you know, as Dan talked about, I think when you look at battery technology, FSD autonomous, I could argue it's probably one of the best AI plays out there. To me, this is more of a table pounder opportunity rather than time to hide in the cave. Can it um, grow? Can it gain market share? Can it achieve scale if China is weak? If there are issues in China? I mean, if Li Auto is really, I mean, it had a very good quarter. It, it reached 100,000 units. That's the point when Tesla started making it work, 100,000 mm -hmm. units. And it's at that critical mark now. So maybe it's poised to sort of, you know, really win the market there. Yeah, look, you raise great points. Moses, you know, obviously raised great points. I mean, I just got back from Asia. You know, I was there for two weeks. I mean, in my opinion, the China story, the cuts they've done, that's the strategic poker move they needed to do. No doubt, demand softened, but I do believe we're starting to see some equilibrium. Where I look out into next year, you look at 2.3, 2.4 million units, 40, 50 percent of that needs to come from China. So to your point, no doubt, China is the hearts and lungs of the Tesla growth story. But it goes back to, look, the, the bears have hated this. You go back five years ago, three years ago, and I get it. They view it as an auto company, as Danny talks about. I view it and have always viewed it as a disruptive technology company, which is why I view the sell-off here and a lot of the hate as more the opportunity to own it rather than the time that there's some sort of, you know, fire in a crowd theater. No hate here, all love. But you know what? I think Elon Musk doesn't love the fact that interest rates have been going higher. He made a point of talking sure. about it at length a couple of weeks ago. How important is the bond market to the Tesla bull story. I mean, I look, Musk called it out. And then again, it goes back to like, that was a disaster conference call. We talked about that, just the way that, that was handled. Yeah, of course, it's very important because the price cuts, essentially nothing even happens to that relative to the consumer. And I think as Nathan's talked about, ultimately, you need to see that come down. You need to see the China story stabilize. You have a lot of competitors come from all different angles. But if you look at Lucid and others, it's very hard to scale, and I think it just continues to come down. It is still Tesla's world, and everyone else is paying rent in electric vehicles. Um, I was just looking, doing some research really quick. For, I mean, first off, again, these panels are, uh, outside of Dan, uh, highly misinformed. I don't think Li Auto shipped a pure electric vehicle yet. It may, may have been at some point this year. Um, they just started shipping pure electric vehicles, so they're, I mean, they're, a hybrid um, player, but but anyway, just putting that point to the side. Uh, and by the way, their autonomy solution, their CEO is on the record um, is saying their autonomy solutions in the you know forty five hundred to six thousand dollar range, and they think the hardware that's in a Tesla is under you know fifteen hundred. I think it's closer to twelve hundred. And I, I I know the founder of, of Liad. I, I used to work. He was my colleague. He used to work with him. And uh, it's a very good company, but again, just starting the segment just off with 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 not really good information. Is China getting competitive? Sure. Um, 
but uh, I think Dan made some of the similar comments I've been making regarding the sum of the parts thesis of their um, of their charging business, their their battery business, and their FSD uh, business, and and how those will continue to unfold. And I think volumes, you know, I think I think twenty twenty four again. I like I said I've said before. I think analysts tend to overshoot in both directions, and I think they brought it down a little bit too much for twenty twenty four. We'll see. We're going to have all kinds of macro economic concerns, but, you know, EV adoption continues to poke through, you know, from a secular perspective, it continues to outstrip any slowdown in, in, in auto. Um, but I, I just find these panels and maybe part of the reason is, is they're so watered down because they're looking at banks. They're looking at, you know, Silicon uh, chip companies they are looking at, you know, uh, financial services companies they are looking at, package good companies, maybe they just don't have the ability to have the kind of breadth and knowledge that they should have about um, the auto business and the electric business, electric auto business that they probably should. So I just find them to be not only just misinformed, but also just highly negative uh, because they're misinformed. Uh, and, and again, in the case of Danny Moses, in the case of Dan Nathan on that panel, they have short positions. So they're talking their book uh, against Tesla. And that's that's ultimately what we're doing. You and I are both bullish. You and I both own the name. We've been very clear uh, about that, and we're we're telling you not only the you know the opportunities for the company, but we also talk about some of the risks too. So, again, I just find these panels to be highly imbalanced. I think Dan did a, a great job, kind of uh, walking through it and supporting his his price target. I think he's going to be ultimately correct. Okay, so there's a couple things that was mentioned in that clip. One is, um, you know, that the macro economy, what's going to happen there? How's that going to impact Tesla? And then they, I love that Dan actually referred to Tesla as an AI company, a disruptive technology company. So I'm going to show a clip here of Ray Wang of Constellation Research. I'm actually going to interview Ray this week and looking forward to that. He's a very well spoken, but he's going to talk about uh, the, the AI boom that's happening his opinion that Microsoft might overtake Apple. And then I want to ask you kind of why is Tesla still not necessarily being seen as an AI company? And we'll discuss that shortly. Let's watch this clip with Ray Wang. Upside, they're on the upside now. Meta, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, and Amazon all moving up. Ray Wang joins us to cover the technology sector this morning. Are you, uh, are you betting on a big tech comeback? Because I think we've already had the comeback, haven't we? <laughs> I think we've had the comeback. The run-up has happened. But I think the important thing is AI is powering that run-up. And of course, we've got a lot of advancements that are coming into the holiday season. And this is really the partnerships that are happening in the cloud, AI, and of course, that cybersecurity attack on the Chinese bank the other day, that's going to reinforce what's important in terms of investment in cybersecurity. You think big tech is going to keep on advancing across the board? The, the seven, the magnificent seven, they keep going up to the end of the year, do they? Yes, they do to the end of the year. And then we get to a point where people do the sell off right before the end of the year to cover their losses. Sure. Do you have one particular big tech company you really like? So right now, I think the big bet is really on Microsoft. And it's a lot of it's whether they're going to hit in terms of uh, not just the cloud, not just the AI piece, but will they be able to break past Apple? So. Well, th there's this contest. Uh, we've invented this contest, actually. <laughs> Apple versus Microsoft, who's the most valuable in the world. At the moment, I've got Apple at 2.87 trillion, Microsoft at 2.70 trillion. There's a $17 billion difference. When is Microsoft going to catch up and beat them? We think it's going to happen in the next month. So, really? Yeah. In the next month? Well, so. Oh, you come back any time you like on this show. <laughs> that's, that's very good stuff. Why? What, what is so good about Microsoft? So Microsoft's firing on all cylinders. They're winning, especially in terms of getting cloud growth. There's a big battle, you know, for cloud. Uh, but the other piece is really the fact that companies are actually looking at them to actually bring AI into the marketplace. And that's the big driver. And of course, they've been able to do one thing that a lot of companies their age have not been able to pull off, which is really get to younger users. It's coming through GitHub, it's coming through like the development, it's coming through the consumer side. And that's been one of the biggest turnarounds. Uh, in the but but do we know for a fact that AI has contributed to Microsoft's bottom line? I mean, is it already contributing? to yes. their profits. Well, it's not contributing directly as the $30 per month plan. That hasn't right. hit yet. What's contributing is the fact that everybody knows they need to move their data into the cloud to start the AI process. Tell me about NVIDIA. It's close to a high, $470 a share at this point, something like that. Where's it going? 
NVIDIA is going to go up. They're the arms dealer because GPUs are what drives AI, and that's really what everybody is looking for. But that's going to be for the next four quarters. Everybody's coming back in and say, I don't want to keep paying NVIDIA for GPUs. And so chips are coming from all different sources. And you're going to see companies like AMD jump into the game. You're going to see other chips, like Google has a TPU that's going to come in as well. And of course, Microsoft's getting into the chip game as well. AI is the next big thing, isn't it? AI is the biggest thing since the internet. Why don't I ever hear AI associated with Apple? And I don't. What happens in the background, right? You get a message, you know, you see the text, the pictures get better on your screen, you take a picture, it's dark, it comes in. Apple's done it all in the background in an ambient way. They're not out there touting AI, it just happens. That's right, yeah. Ray, that was good stuff. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> and I appreciate your support for Microsoft. Oh, you're a help. When are we going to hear AI associated with Tesla? <laughs> but go ahead and re reply to this comment. Yeah, there's a number of great comments there. First off, you know, what Apple does more of is really on the machine learning side and what you see them doing with camera and imaging and 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 you really your use cases for the phones and, and understanding the apps you open. That's really all machine learning based. Very little um, on the AI side. And then their assistant has fallen woefully behind. So this is why you don't hear Apple and AI, quite frankly. Quite frankly, now they're going to, they're going to make a huge pitch with um, their headset, um, their AR headset coming out. And, but even then I'll, I'll question how much AI is involved versus machine learning and, and pure hardware. It's a pretty uh, complex piece of hardware uh, to build. So that's why you're not hearing it. Uh, NVIDIA, I, I, I like his, uh, his take. I think they're going to be constrained for the next four quarters or so at a minimum as they catch up. But then there are there is competition coming in. But I think when you step back and look at it, it's not that just the hardware they're selling. They're selling their CUDA platform uh, for AI development, and that has as much you know value in it as probably the hardware itself. So you know everybody's going to become a quote unquote arms dealer, just like the competition's coming in EV. But let's actually see the performance and what they're shipping. And then let's see they, if they have all the tools, like Tesla has a supercharging platform. They have battery supply. They've got their own operating system in the car. They've got autonomy. You know, let's see if these other silicon providers like AMD are going to have the software solution that comes with it as well. I'm doubtful. And then Microsoft says they're getting into, so everybody says they're getting the silicon game. Uh, and Tesla's already in it. Tesla has been making the inference computer for their vehicles for probably over three years now. Uh, they, they took that business away from NVIDIA. Remember, NVIDIA is fabulous. NVIDIA doesn't make anything. They design, and then they send those designs out to a TSMC, for example, who fabricate their chips and do the um, integration onto a substrate, usually with high bandwidth memory, put those all together, and then they ship that out, and that's an H100 computer or the H200 that they just announced this morning. Um, so why does Tesla not uh, come into this conversation is because um, number one, Tesla doesn't advertise. Um, I mean, that's, you know, if you, if, if 98% of the world saw my yoke and my car turning as it drove around mm -hmm. corners and did turn by turn navigation, my guess is you would start hearing Tesla being talked about more as a, as an AI company in terms of what they're doing in the vehicle. But I think as this FSD ships and it gets in a greater volume, it'll be more, it'll be discussed more and more um, as an AI player and also as Dojo ramps and they actually start uh, providing that service to not only themselves, but the others to as Grok gets out in volume, you'll start hearing more and then all of a sudden you have this AI assistant in the vehicles. And all of a sudden you have this like Knight Rider kit experience. I sent that tweet out and Elon responded. Yep. This is what kind of what we're, we're going for. When that all starts coming together, you'll hear them discussed as an AI company, but just to summarize, I mean, they make their own AI inference chips. Okay. Uh, test meaning they, they design their own and they send them out for fab just like NVIDIA. And they do their own software for, for AI and machine learning. And of course, they have the end solution running in a consumer product that's in production. You know, I think everything that kind of, we had this chat GPT moment in November, December of last year, we're coming on the year anniversary. 
And it's amazing some of the stuff it can do, but it's also highly, highly error prone. If you've used ChatGPT4, if you've used BARD, you get a lot of wrong answers. And in a vehicle, you're not allowed to get that many wrong answers. It's got to make the right decision, video in, control out. It's got to be, you know, to the nines, perfect. So I think Tesla is going after a different a different animal when it comes to AI, but once it's solved and it's in, it's at scale and it's visible to others, I think it, it will be in those conversations. And I think there'll be a realization too of like, oh my God, they designed their own inference chips. Oh my God, they designed their own data centers. Oh my God, they're sending them all out for fab and they're, you know, they're going to they're gonna be in production on their own data center this year. They already are in production on their own data center. And then now they're filling that out with NVIDIA and with Tesla silicon i think there'll be a realization like it like it's been in the past tesla investors people that study the company are usually a bit out ahead of this i've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the tesla investor please check it out simply go to my website at herbertong.com well it's been very frustrating for us tesla investors in a way it's actually still good that the story is still to come so you saw that microsoft uh, they're they're booming they're growing. People think they're going to be the largest company in the world in the next month, Ray is saying. NVIDIA, of course, has uh, benefited from the AI boom the most. I love the way he said that he's an arms dealer. <laughs> but Tesla, as you just outlined, has everything, has everything. And yet it's not being valued as an AI company, it's still seen as a car company, which is good and bad. But I think it's ultimately good because it means that the valuation is about to come. And us who are in it now, who want to keep uh, accumulating, it's the best time. When you know something is about to come <laughs> that no one else is seeing yet that you do. Thank you so much, Jeff. Follow him on X at uh, the Jeff Lutz. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Herbert. Appreciate it.